Hey everybody, konnichiwa, what's up? It's JJ. Hey everybody, welcome back. For today's video, I thought that I would teach you all a little bit about me. So how I went from university student in Osaka to the countryside and doing MMA in Gunma, and then all the way down to Tokyo being a stuntman, and then a comedian and an actor and blah, everything. So it started a long, long time ago. No, I'm just joking. But it was about 2009, I believe. Yeah, 2009, September 2009. And uh, I was a university student, never been to Japan, always wanted to go to Japan. I dread, yeah, let's go even farther back. <laughs> Whoop, rewind. So when I was a little boy, I grew up with a Japanese family in a small, 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 hick-ass part of Canada called Vancouver Island in a small town called Campbell River. Very, very countryside, very, very, ugh. I don't know, we had like one mall. It was a small town, nothing to do, but lots of beautiful scenery. And I grew up there and my mom was friends with a Japanese man that was a sushi chef. He opened up his own Japanese restaurant in Canada. And my mom was friends with the parents, I was friends with the kids. And I used to go there almost every day I could. The family was super nice. They taught me a lot about Japanese culture and I grew up loving Japan. I knew about Dragon Ball when there was no English version of Dragon Ball, so they were showing me the cards and the manga in Japanese, which I had no clue about, but they were like, oh, this is Goku, he's a, he's a Japanese superhero, and yeah. I started loving him and falling in love with Dragon Ball, not even knowing a single thing about it. Just that it was cool, and I liked it. And the family, though, the family was so nice, and that's what got me into Japanese culture. They were so nice, it puzzled me why they acted a certain way, why they used chopsticks, why they liked ja different food. I was gonna say Japanese food, but I didn't know. They were just the coolest, nicest family ever, and they got me into Japanese culture. So when I turned into a uh, shogakusei, what is that in English now? Oh, elementary school student, uh, like grade three or four, I think. Yeah, grade three or four, I was obsessed with Japan. Every project we had, what do you want to do it on? You can do it on anything. Japan. Oh, we have a geography project. What do you want to do it on? Japan. Everything. Japan, 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 Japan. Until high school. And in high school, I was so excited because I thought that I could learn Japanese. And then I was like, oh, this will help me. I can go to Japan in my dream, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the high school that taught Japanese in my hometown, there was only one. There was two high schools I had a choice to go to and one taught Japanese. The other was like Spanish or something. Uh, which I want to learn, but not as much as Japanese. And that school ended up being high in drugs. My mom didn't want me to go there, so I didn't end up going to that school and learning Japanese. So I didn't get to go to Japan till university, and I took two classes in university, but I had basic Japanese skills. So like, Konnichiwa, watashi no wa Joshua desu. Like, my name is Joshua or I'm from Canada, like small Japanese. But that was the building stones that helped me get by in my first year in Osaka. And in Osaka, everything was new to me. All you can drink for $20? Wow, yeah, okay, let's try that. University in Japan is very tame compared to the West. In Canada, every day I studied hard. There were so many tests, it was stressful. Mostly because I put everything to the last minute and that's my fault. But in Japan, everything was so easy. Even one of my classes for the final, it, the final was, and I still can't believe it to this day, the final was written on the paper, write two pages on why you like this class. Ugh, what is this, I thought. I mean, this is too slack. So I ended up going with the Australians and doing no miho dies, all you can drinks like three times a week, getting drunk and having hangovers in class. I was a good student. <laughs> before I went to Osaka, about three or four years before, in my early 20s, I was in love with Japanese comedy. I researched it, I found all these DVDs, these movies, these clips, Gaki no Tsukai, uh, Takeshi's Castle. I knew Takeshi's Castle first, maybe. Yeah, because I saw it on TV or something. And uh, Gotsue Kanji, all these I loved before coming to Osaka. And when I went to Osaka, Japanese still have like blockbusters, dude. They still have blockbusters. But in Japan, their video rental shop is called Sutaya. And I would go there and I would rent DVD after DVD after DVD of Japanese comedy. And I studied and I loved it. And I was like, wouldn't it be awesome if I could be a comedian? And I held that dream deep inside me because I didn't believe I could. Because I never heard of any foreign comedians in Japan and it's very, very tight Japanese culture. And um, I just didn't think I could do it. 
and I kept that in me and people were like, yeah, you should go and you should try. And I went in Osaka to Yoshimoto and I kind of signed up, but they have a school and all this stuff you have to do, which I'll get into later. So I just kind of held it in me and did a couple comedy gigs here and there, but not like big or on a stage or anything like that. And after Osaka, I went back to Canada. I finished graduating in UBC, University of British Columbia. And then I went back to Japan. But before I did, I went to Thailand, China, had a little fun, went around. But then I went back to Japan and I got told that I was moving to do the JET program in Guma Prefecture. And I was like, where the hell is Guma? I even asked my friends in Osaka, I was like, where is Guma? And every one of my friends were like, I don't know. I was like, dude, you're, you're Japanese, you live in Japan, where is Guma? And no one that I knew from Osaka knew where the hell Guma was. <laughs> like, how crazy is that? It's, Japan ain't that big. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I went to Guma, everyone's like, oh, it's countryside. I got nervous, I was like, what am I gonna do if there's no shopping mall? Because my town in Canada is countryside. We have one freaking mall, it's like 15 minutes to get the mall. Convenience stores are like an hour apart. I was kind of nervous. And when I went to Guma, lots of good adventures, very fun time. Um, those are all different videos I can talk about, but we're getting to my journey, right? So I was a teacher there for two and a half years. And if you know the movie or anime GTO, Great Teacher Onizuka, that was me. And I had a Yankee junior high school that I worked at, people smoking, riding bikes, sex and drugs and tattoos at 14. It was hell. I was the blonde martial artist, badass foreigner teacher that I got in trouble by the Japanese teachers trying to be the students' friends, which they really needed with parents dying and child abuse and just very black stuff I had to deal with. But I protected those kids like it was me. And I'm still Facebook friends with all of them, that's the craziest thing. <laughs> but yeah, I love those guys and all those times, but I had to move on. I had to go towards my dream. So what ended up happening was my contract with that school ended and I said, what the hell do I do? Well, I follow my dream. I went to Tokyo and I thought the best thing to do is to use my great resume of a perfect university and all my skills I had. Well, that didn't do shit for me. So I was like, what am I good at? Well. 30 years of martial arts, what can I do with that? And then I don't know why, but it hit me. Be a stuntman. So I researched stuntmen in Tokyo and then found a guy and she named Chuck Johnson and he was a head stunt guy here in Tokyo. And I asked him, I wanna be a stuntman. Is there anything I can do? Can you give me some tips? And he said, yeah, I, I have a stunt class. If you wanna join it, come down to Tokyo and try. And I was like, yes, that's it. I'm, you know, I'm doing something. I can make money using my body. Using my body. <laughs> and yeah, I went to Tokyo and I became a stuntman. And he got me a stunt gig working with Arashi in a commercial. And then I met people in the industry on that job talking about modeling and acting and doing things like that. And I was like, oh my God, is it, is it possible? I can do this. So I became a stuntman to a model and an actor, and then I did all three. And then I thought, you know what though, if I can do this and I can do TV shows and be a talent, Japanese call celebrities talent in Japan. A little different, but another video I can describe that more. And then yeah, I was, I was a model and talent and doing top commercials. And then before I knew it, I was one of the biggest talents in Japan. Yeah, it just flew by in a blink of an eye. But then when I was in that industry, television, comedian, it was so close, right? So I went back to my dream. I said I wanted to be a comedian, and this time I'm not gonna fail. I'm gonna do it. But this industry, this talent industry, was no help in the end. Because this is a gaijin world, it's foreigner world. A Japanese comedian is Japanese only with the rare, 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 rare exclusion of a few foreigners. Maybe three or four do it now. But when I started being a comedian, there was only like two. Chad Mullane and not even Pakkun, I think. I, I think I was doing Orai before Pakkun. Chad Mullane is the king, and he taught me a lot, and I will get into him another day, maybe. But for now, it's my story. So yeah, what I did was I looked around, and I applied at all the Japanese agencies here in Tokyo until I found uh, the one that was right for me. And the one that was right for me, sh long story short, was Sony Music. In Sony Music, you think, oh yeah, like, artists and music? But no, they have a small agency for comedians. And actually some of the best comedians, like Cowboy Sakoshi, who's one of the best single, or we say in Japanese, ping gaining, single comedian. So yeah, I had a lot of pride and loved it. 
and great chance. And from that, I started doing live shows and from live shows, I was getting other shows. And yeah, from there, me and my partner's lives changed. Once we joined the agency, we were getting a couple of job offers, a couple, we got a lot of job offers. And uh, we did our auditions for TV. I even did some single auditions for TV. He was also getting us jobs outside of the agency, which was really cool because we were doing like a kimono show where I was wearing a Japanese traditional kimono. And we got to introduce the girls as we did manzai in between. And yeah, just it's a crazy experience being a comedian in Japan. And not only that now, but with being a comedian and being a talent, I am now the top grossing, highest earning, Japanese talent now in Japan. How crazy is that? And not only that, but I get noticed a lot. I do live shows two times a week. And yeah, it's just crazy. But with Corona now, everything's gone. But it's all good. I'll come back fighting hard and it'll be pretty good. Except now I will be fighting hard by myself because with Corona, my partner went and got Corona Madness. No, actually, he just went really crazy. With Corona, he started looking on Twitter and thinks it's the end of the world and McDonald's is feeding us human meat. And I am not joking. This is what he actually believes now. And it's kind of culty, like there's like a group on Twitter that he follows and all this stuff and it's very cult-like and Japan has lots of cults so it wasn't good I had to get rid of that. But it's all good because weirdly enough, being a foreigner in Japan, I wrote Japanese neta or Japanese bits. All the comedy that we performed on stage, 95% of it was by this guy. So in theory, if I try my hardest and I beat the odds, I should be able to make success with being a ping gaming, a solo comedian. And I did live stand up too, so somehow, some way, I'll make it work because you can't be number one without climbing from number zero and all the way up. Is zero a number? Or am I talking out of my ass? I'm just kidding, but anyways, I feel confident that I'll be fine and I'm just happy doing Japanese comedy and I hope to just create wonderful things and yeah. I got my dream and now I want to further it more, create more and make more wonderful stuff. That's what I plan to do and that's what I will do. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I love you. Thank you and if you enjoyed my story and you want to hear more, please leave some comments down below on what things you want to hear. I've had bumps in with Yakuza's. I've had Yakuza's call me senpai. I've been to amazing Japanese live shows. I know a rock star. I know an actor. I know a bodybuilder. I know all these crazy people with so many crazy stories. Let me know what you want to hear about and I will tell you the secret side of Japan. Or I can just tell you more about comedy, which is my thing. Also guys, if you can support me on Patreon, even just one dollar can help me go towards my dream and makes me more motivated to create more videos because I do all the editing, all the lighting, everything by myself, and it is so hard doing with such a busy schedule. So if you could dig deep, deep, deep in the couch cushions of your house for just one dollar and then just help me with that on Patreon, I would forever be yours. Well, maybe not forever. Forever is a long time to be a slave. But I would really appreciate you and I would put you on the list at the end of the video here and maybe send you some secret sexy stuff too. Ah! Hey guys, thank you so much for watching another episode of JJ's Bizarre Adventures. Not to be confused with Jojo, although that was originally supposed to be my gay may or stage name in Japan. <gasps> A JJ fact you didn't know! Anyways guys, thank you so much and let me know what you guys want to see next and I am just so happy. Or am I acting? Nah, I'm happy.